Previously on Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. A mocking perb. This was kind of got a helmet on. Cool. The ostracizer. Ah, ha, ha, I see what you did there. Ah. And now back to Paranormal Sight. Hello. Sneako B. Back with some more Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. When we last left off. We ran into creepy old Ara Ara Ishii, which, okay, it's, you guys did clarify. It's pronounced Ara Ishii, I think. Ara Ishii or Ara Aishi? <laughs> One of those. Listen, man, I was trying to figure out how the fuck to pronounce it, okay? I saw a bunch of people being all pissy about it, like, oh, you need to not pronouncing it right. Oh, it's driving me crazy. And then not fucking tell me how to do it. And you know what? I went and looked it up trying to figure it out, and like, no site gave me anything. There was. Seriously, type in Ara Ishii pronunciation on Google, and it actually gives you nothing. It gives you Arashi without the I, but apparently it's never heard of the name Ara Ishii. So don't shit on me, all right? Fuck it, I'm doing my best. Anyway, Ara Ishii is out here being all weird, and Susumi's like, give me your cursed stone, weirdo, before I beat your ass with my own cursed stone or my pork chops. And getting his cursed stone thankfully saves Yako from getting horribly brutally stabbed in the gut or disemboweled or something. Unfortunately, though, that hasn't stopped Shogo from eating shit. Yeah, I think Shogo's just gonna be screwed. I it's funny how they seemingly made Shogo like the protagonist of this game, and yet he seems like he's just gonna be dead, right? I think that we only literally control him in the prologue, and that's gonna be it. Unless they somehow bring him back to life. Right of resurrection? I don't know. But he's dead. Phone's ringing. Oh, crap. It's my good old pal Nejima out of jail and working as a janitor. Murdering everybody, just like he murdered Mio in that one ending. And it gives Susumi 12 hours to stop him before he unleashes his curse and kills a holy boatload of people. So now it's up to Susumi and Areo to hunt his ass down and bring him to justice and also find the uh, remaining curse bearers. Which is also, by the way, clarified that there are a total of nine curse bearers, not seven, because there are actually nine tails. And you guys did, and like, God, there's so many comments about this. How this was told to me at the beginning of the game. Now, hold on. Before you guys give me too much crap, and I did say this last episode, I did remember them saying that there were actually more tales than the seven that were given to us. I forgot that it was exactly nine. That said, something I was completely unaware of, I did not realize that at the start, they actually gave me nine tales. I thought they gave me seven. I didn't actually bother to count them. I just sort of was like, oh, I guess it was seven there. I mean, it even says in this little menu thing, it, which make it even more confusing, is Seven Mysteries. I mean, I get it, I get it. That's the name of it. it they did it to make it more uh, appealing, right? Because that's a very common thing to give to like the like mysteries of something. Like they remember they did that shit in Kingdom Hearts 2 when you're in like the virtual Twilight Town. So it's a pretty common go-to, but I didn't realize that in here is actually nine. So not counting this first one, these are nine. So yeah, didn't, didn't, didn't realize. <laughs> I didn't see you guys mention apparently a lot of other Let's Players sort of forget this too, or not notice this. I think just after a while, it does get a little confusing when everyone just keeps saying 777. Seven, seven. But it does lead me to believe then that in some way, myself the player is gotta be like a curse bearer. That's what I think. Or like a fucking ghost or a cursed stone spirit or echo or something, right? We are something. We are essentially allowing us to manipulate the story to uncover the truth. And you guys did also point out, by the way, in regards to decisions being made uh, in the section where I was talking to, with Mr. Araishi, I was like, I was wondering, what, what, how did I influence anything? Since it seemed like the default to that story was just simply getting his curse stone. So how was it even possible that there was a scenario where he didn't? Apparently, if you choose not to, to show your curse stone or to explain what your ability is, he gets upset and leaves with his curse stone. So that, that right there is the default ending to that story. So essentially, that means that we, the player, are the one influencing Susumi's decision. And it's actually showing him his ability and stuff like that. I see, okay, okay, that makes a bit more sense. The thing that sort of, I guess, makes it a little confusing is that not every decision, like the, or even the, the default choices for things, necessarily leads to an actual uh, split in the timeline, right? This isn't like a zero time dilemma or virtue's last reward or something where literally every significant choice that can affect the plot in a way that to lead to a break in the plot 
is shown here. It's only showing some of them. So for example, it's not showing up here on the timeline, uh, the option to uh, not show him your curse stone and having him leave. It doesn't actually show up as like a break here. I mean, we see it. We see it in the default ending over here, but it doesn't actually show up as like a break. So it's like, it's a little, a little confusing. It, it really actually kind of reminds me a lot of what happened in 13 Sentinels in its timeline, where it's like, it kind of picks and chooses what things are sort of like significant and it gets kind of, it gets a little confusing. I mean, I'm not saying it's necessarily the wrong way to do it because obviously the game isn't expecting you to play out that version of the ending, right? But it does get sort of like, I get a little uh, like unsure of then what I'm seeing here. I, I think maybe the best way to look at this is, I, I guess, saying that every path that I see here is always my decision, always. It's always what's been created. And the ones that are maybe there by default aren't always what happens, which means that, I, I don't know, maybe there was a timeline where Shogo could have lived. I, you know, maybe by default, he he could have lived. I don't know, man. I mean, it's, it, then again, though, this one's still like, all I did was wake up Yoko instead of, you know, going on a murder rampage. I don't know. I seem like he was always doomed to, to die. But yeah, apparently if you let our Ishii get away, uh, the storyteller would have essentially forced you back to the chapter select and said that you you picked the wrong thing and that you you know you didn't succeed in your goal. So the chapter will be marked incomplete. So maybe it's more that it's just showing me what I need to see. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, by the way, guys, it also clarified the what I said before about 428 Shibuya Scramble being a game written by the same person. I, I was sort of told this, I think, on stream. It's not true. The, the person that made this game and uh, was involved in this writing is not the same person that worked on Food 428. So whoever said that was full of shit. Oh, by the way, I also fucked up in regards to who had the soul dregs. I, I sorry, I, he even said his name. It was he said Namagaki, not Ara Ishii had soul dregs in his stone. So I, I, I got I got confused there. Sorry about that. So, yeah. And we never asked Namagaki if he had actually killed anybody. So apparently he did. It at least looks that way. Arishi, on the other hand, did not. So that so he, when he told me that he didn't kill anybody or he wasn't trying to mislead me, that was actually the truth, which is probably why I was unable to kill him. Some of you guys also point out that it, it might be that the, the whole Tetsuo and his desire of the Rite of Resurrection isn't necessarily that he actually wants to use it. His desire is to stop it. So that might that might be what the, the stipulation is for him, which is interesting. That's actually really kind of clever. That's true. He's not he's not really trying to get it because he wants it. He's trying to to essentially prevent it from happening. But there's still a desire involved with it. So I guess it's counting that. Very cool. Every character has such a unique like desire and idea of what this Rite of Resurrection thing is. But anyway, last episode, uh, Muffy said, little did Nico know that by uploading the sixth video of the series, he fulfilled co the condition for YouTube's curse stone, Youth Skate, which instantly traps the video in the cage of age restriction. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so FYI, if you didn't know, or you're maybe watching this sometime in the future where, you know, this is already old news, essentially what happened with the last episode is I had to re-upload it because YouTube had, had age-gated it, and I tried to dispute it, and they denied it still. And the reason was because uh, there was the dead body of that girl that had committed the you-know-what, and it showed up on the screen and that triggered it. That was just enough for it. Even though all our the characters were in the game literally talking about how it potentially wasn't that, right? That it wasn't due to that word. It didn't matter. And I, I'm almost convinced that the, the people that quote unquote review the whole thing with like the terms and shit of YouTube, like for limited ads and age gating and whatnot, I swear to God, it's just bots as well. Cause it like, I just cannot believe sometimes the decision making for some of this. It's ridiculous. I think the real cre creme de la creme though was the email I got where the where e YouTube literally said in a generic bot delivered email that, hey, are you okay, Nico? We at YouTube are worried about you and your mental health because of the recent videos you've been posting of self harm. And then they give me like a bunch of things to, to check out. And I'm like, this feels so hilariously hollow and honestly feels more insulting to people suffering from mental health issues than it does trying to help or defend it. It's just, I just couldn't even believe it. So anyway, I had to go back and blur that scene. It's very likely impossible that I might have to blur that scene anytime it shows up. 
or at least shows up in relation to that word. Here's the thing. I'm not saying the word right now. I don't think that the word by itself is necessarily the trigger. I think it was a combination of things. I think it was because of that image being said with the word and that's what sort of set it off. Also, I had originally called last video 12 hours and maybe the YouTube determined that as a like oh, a countdown to you know what? So I changed the title to something else. I don't know, man. It's YouTube's fucking weird sometimes and insanely frustrating. I was pretty pissed when I saw that happen, so. But I'm also, I, I wanna make clear to you guys, I really am gonna do my best not to have to censor shit if I don't have to. Like I said, I'm not gonna censor the S word if it gets said in the game or whatever, but it's possible that if I see a body and it has that tied with the at thing, I might have to have it censored or blurred out in some way. But anyway, Muffy, thank you so much for your hilariously morbid and truly accurate comment. And it's that reason you are comment of the day. Okay, so I think we are on to chapter two now. The game's not really telling us, but I think that uh, these moments right here marks the end of, uh, yeah, so this one, this one, and this one marks the end of chapter one. I mean, now we're hopping to chapter two and we're still just uh, sticking with these three. I'm almost wondering if this is gonna be it, but I, I, I don't know. I was almost thinking that at some point we'd get, we'd control the other characters as well, like Namagaki, uh, I guess potentially uh, Nejima and whatnot, like the other curse bearers, but maybe it'll just be these three. But you guys did inform me that there is actually uh, a little bit of a funny goof that I, I missed here that I would like to see real quick. So apparently when the phone, uh, from answer the phone, okay. So when the phone starts ringing, don't immediately answer it. Uh, and apparently I get some fun uh, dialogue between uh, Susumi and Oreo. All right, so go here. Wait a little longer. Huh? What's this? Something stuck to the side of the phone. Oh, and I got another bird. Come on, boss. That's not what we were supposed to be searching for. Hell yeah, it is. New burb. Burb. Uh, Pelicanot. Oh, shit. He's smoking a fucking sardine cigarette. What a badass. Uh, wait a little longer. Talk to him. Boss the phone. What about it? Uh, okay, it's same thing. Now oh, give it a rest. Do you have anything better to do? Well, not exactly. Then why don't you pick it up? <laughs> we'll miss it if you don't hurry. Right. They're probably hanging up soon. You really okay with that? You aren't the least bit curious? I guess I'm a little curious. Yeah. Ah, so you're one of those people. Think that if you pick up the phone too quickly, the caller will think you have nothing going on. So you deliberately let it ring a bunch of times for answering. Do people really do that? There are definitely some who want to give off the impression of being busier than they really are. Well, detectives don't have the time for that kind of foolishness. Then go pick it up. <laughs> Fine. You leave me no choice. I'll answer it. <clears throat> Hold on, Oreo. We don't know what could happen. I'll do it. Sure, it's all yours. You little. You know, I might just keep ringing until you pick it up. True. Might even be ringing because someone knows we're here. It's entirely possible. In which case, come on. Anytime now. <laughs> oh, I think we did it. All right. That was funny. All right, we got a burb out of it, too. Cool. All right, back to the story chart. Okay, so uh, we're gonna continue with with Haraway's story, which I think I might, I think we're gonna do that one. Yeah, because we haven't seen her in a while. We've seen Yako a bit last episode. Let's hop back to Haraway. Life can be tough. Oh, right, and the other thing that, there's one thing I am curious about Yako's. Apparently Yako has killed somebody, or at least it looks that way, right? Because someone used her curse stone on that one teacher. Unless I get a choice, but I, I mean, this is happening. This, this event happens at the same time as this one. Seemingly, she goes home, but maybe something happened between them. But for right now, let's go check out Haraway. Throughout the night, Richter continues to gather information about the curse stones while Haraway lies awake until dawn, preoccupied by the prospect of bringing her lost child back to life. 10 a.m.
Good morning, ma'am. How are you feeling? Hmm, I'm fine. I hope we can make good progress today. How's your coast stone looking? I haven't felt anything from it since sunrise. Interesting. It's possible that its powers can only be unleashed at night, then. And that aside, why are you so late this morning? There are unfortunately some things that can't be investigated while the world slumbers. But I did get some research done in what limited time I had. Very well. Let's talk. I do like the the relationship a lot of these characters have with these other characters that I'm not controlling, like Yaka with Mio and uh, Susumi with Areo and Haroe with Richter here. It's really good. It's all super, like, it's so engaging. This is the old mansion where I was born and raised. Also the music, too. The town is beginning to wake up once more. The clamor of society can be heard from beyond the garden mm -hmm. gates. Like any day, a cloud of pollution drifts out from the industrial area. No one's in the match at the moment. The door has been locked shut. The housekeeper has already left after cleaning and preparing food. He's looking a bit tired. He must have been up all night investigating. By the way, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And what's that? Our current plan is to steal a curse stone that's already absorbed soul dregs, but... I'm wondering if it would suffice to not steal, but instead negotiate with a curse bearer and have them use the right for our purposes. Oh? I mean, I suppose that would accomplish the same, but do you think it's possible? So long as we offer compensation, it may prove much easier than you'd expe expect. Compensation? Cash, for instance. That wouldn't be off the table for a family as rich as the Shig Shigamas, would it? Of course. My any amount would be fine if it'd get the job done. I won't let monetary matters lead me to regrets the way it did back with the ransom. Okay, with that option on the table, let's figure out our strategy. Do you have a curse bearer with whom we can negotiate in mind? Not yet. Surprisingly, it seems the other curse bearers haven't been that proactive about collecting soul dregs. Did you see the news this morning? No, I haven't. Overnight, three mysterious deaths were reported in this area. They've yet to announce the identities of the bodies found. But they've been nicknamed the Hondro Serial Killings. It's garnered quite some attention on the streets. Oh my. Only three? That's what I thought. Even if the victims were curse bearers, just one or two wouldn't be enough soul dregs. And for what those curse stones are capable of, a mere three victims seems a little on the low side. With this little activity all through the night, the curse bearers must be c a cautious bunch. <laughs> Unlike that Shogo guy! Damn, that one and he went fucking crazy, dude! That's killing everybody! What's holding them back? Are we not all after the power of resurrection? There may still be some undiscovered victims, but it doesn't seem like anyone has gathered enough soul dregs yet. We might have to set up some bait to spur them into action. <laughs> Damn, Richter! I love again, he's like, I'm not gonna help you kill anybody, but, you know, I might be willing to help, you know, bait somebody into doing it. And then we offer them a deal. None of the curse bears seem very proactive. I wonder if this situation could be what the mastermind who kicked it all off intended. Now that's an interesting theory. You think there's someone behind this all? You mentioned hearing an agonized voice telling you to kill when you first obtained the curse stone. That doesn't sound like a coincidence to me. Someone agitated the curses in this area on purpose, and they are all likely after the rite of resurrection as well. So you're thinking this person is not one of the curse bearers? You've got a sharp mind, ma'am. Though it might seem obvious for the mastermind to become a curse bearer and collect soul dregs if they were after the rite, this would be very risky, since as a curse bearer, they themselves would become a target. So, it'd actually be more convenient for them if the curse bearers moved less aggressively. That's right. But despite that, they've been inciting the curse bearers to commit murders. Why? Let's consider this. What if the mastermind isn't trying to collect soul dregs themselves? You mean their intention was also to steal the souls, while the other curse bearers compete with each other from the start? Sitting back and observing from the sidelines is the safer course of action. Which is why I figured it best for us to attempt the same strategy. So, how should we do it? There's still a reason to suspect the mastermind could be a curse bearer themselves. 
To be honest, I want to keep my distance from whoever it is. There's no telling what kind of power they might possess. Whether our aim is to negotiate or steal, we'll have to outpace the Mastermind in making contact with the other curse bearers. How do you suppose we do so? At this point, all we can do is search. If there's a Mastermind inciting the curse bearers to collect soul dregs, can we be sure there even is a Rite of Resurrection? Good question! The Rite could be nothing but a myth fabricated to spur the curse bearers into action. Seeing it might be for naught, but do you want to give up, ma'am? Never. Understood. After all, we'll never know the truth unless we see it for ourselves. But we'll do it without using the curses ourselves. At least in theory. By the way, I met a few people who seemed like potential curse bearers last night. I did some investigating to all of them. But I only managed to get de detailed information on two. You're quick. I suppose that's to be expected from an investigator extraordinaire. I appreciate the flattery. First, this Ayame Tono, the girl we talked about talked to before, though she isn't a curse bear herself. She's a student attending T University of Art. She currently lives alone in an apartment near Midoricho Park. You even determined her address. You're not one to be underestimated, Mr. Investigator Extraordinaire. I called every single university with Ukiyo A in the curriculum pretending to be her parent. I went around to check on her place on the way here. It doesn't seem like she returned home last night. I'm worried she might run into some trouble, or might have run into some trouble. Didn't you attempt to follow her last night? I'm embarrassed to say, but I couldn't. She shook me. I couldn't keep track of her. And here I thought you were an investigator extraordinaire. I'd like to learn more about her, but it would take some time. She's planning to seal the curse stones, just like us. It's best we act carefully around her. Next is the tall man who was dressed in black. Oh, Slender Man? I met him near Kinshicho. He stood out with the way he dressed. I managed to get some good information from him. Impressive. What can I say? He works as the secretary of Hihako Soap's chairwoman. Yeah. I believe his name is Takumi Yomioka. The Yaku Soap's headquarters and factories are both located in Hanjo, correct? Yes, they've been here for a while, but it's only in the past 10 years that the company has shown significant growth. I remember seeing the chairwoman on the news a few years back. She seems to be very shrewd. With the increase in sales, I assumed she'd want her factories running at full capacity. But with the harsh restrictions against industrial waste, a lot of the factories with older equipment had to be shut down. That's right. Even ten years ago, there were many complaints about chemical plants dumping waste into the river. Most companies back then were more concerned with making a profit than protecting the environment. I say, that's part of what led to the, the river being so polluted. I wonder what a man working for such a company would have been up to in the middle of the night. On the way here, I stopped by the company's headquarters, but they hadn't started for the day. I should have better luck later. Let's hope you will. Perhaps they're interested in seeing if the ride would be beneficial for their product research into beauty and skincare? Ha! Now that's an interesting thought. <laughs> that's funny. I ran into one more suspicious young man last night. This one seemed to be out collecting soul tracks, right? Oh, Arashi. Indeed. I couldn't get a good look at him, though. And I couldn't gather enough intel to properly identify him. Well, that's a shame. But I can make an educated guess. Oh? You know that researcher discovered the ancient text on the Rite of Resurrection? The one that lives near here? His name is Hideki Araishi, and the man I met was very similar in stature. Oh my. Even he is involved? How awfully suspect. Considering his background, couldn't he be the one who initiated the whole affair? I think it's possible, yes. Which is why I decided to refrain from making contact with him for the time being. Safety first! Understandable. Of course, I want to learn more, but this isn't the right time to focus on him. I prefer to ascertain who else is a curse bearer. 
First, I'll return to Hiako Soaps to see that man in black. Their headquarters are down on South Warigasui Street. Okay. I learned something new about the criminal involved with the kidnapping. It concerns the serial killings. There was a body found at Kamagata High School. The person was identified as a school teacher. His name was Kohai Janushi. Hmm. Do you think he was a curse bearer? Not sure. It's possible. But regardless, this means the two people who knew the truth about the kidnapping are both dead. Hmm. Just when we were getting somewhere. It isn't enough to make me give up, of course. Still, we don't know anything about Mishio Shiraishi's residence. It'd be wise to pay it a visit. Understood. Serial killings. In addition to the three victims associated with the Hanjo serial killings, there's Mishio Shiraishi, who reportedly committed suicide, and the police officer who died at the former Yasuda Gardens. If strange deaths continue occurring like so, they're bound to inspire strange rumors. But those last two have nothing to do with the Seven Mysteries, no? It's true. Both occurred a week before this accursed situation began. Still, it cannot be ruled out. It's possible that the Mastermind was involved even with those killings. Wait. Hmm, interesting. So yeah, so including the, the, the death of that girl and the police officer, it's like all these weird deaths that happened before the curses started, and yet, you know, they do seem sort of like uh, they were cursed in some way, right? So the Mastermind could have been involved with those killings. How? What if there were preliminary steps to awakening the Seven Mysteries curses? Can we really assume they're unrelated just because the timing doesn't match up? Or rather, the police officer's death is so baffling that it'd be easier if it were connected to these curses. The victim wasn't the type to be caught off guards easily. You seem to know a lot about this. Hmm, because he, he was. He was in the same cl class as him. I suppose we weren't strangers. My personal feelings might be wrapped up in this one, too. I see. If you were to investigate this matter more, you might get a lead on the Mastermind. You're right. If we wish to focus on the Mastermind's identity, this would be a fine starting point. We might even discover more deaths related to the curses on the way. We should pay attention to today's news. Well, that's all I have to report. Shall we continue with our investigation? What do you want to do? If you still can't use the curse stone, taking a walk should be f a fine place to start. Right, let's go together. I want to see what's going on for myself. In that case, I'll trust you to decide on where we should go, ma'am. Okay. Where should I go to begin my search? Which places have stood out to me most so far? Okay, three places. Kamagata High, South Wari Gasui Street, and uh, Midoricho Park. Hmm. I think I want to go to Kamagata first. I don't know what the fuck is going on with Janucci. Jin Here we are at the ground zero, Kamagata High School. I guess it's logical that the police has got this place shut down. The teacher's body was found here after all. It's as if the students have nowhere to go now that the school's closed. Any burps? Huh? Mm. I see no burps. He appears to be wary of his police officers. Maybe the police really do have something against private investigators, just like in those detective novels. The news has attracted a bunch of curious onlookers, huh? That works in our favor. The more people around, the better we can blend in. I think you're gonna have a hard time blending in anywhere, uh, Richter. Seriously, with that outfit. It seems the officers are still inspecting the scene. Entry has been strictly prohibited. This place is said to be connected with the story of the Fool's Procession. I wouldn't be surprised if a curse bear decided to churn up. However, I need to find out if that teacher was a curse bear or not. I expect the police to be baffled, since they don't know about the curses. I can ask around and see what the students have to say. Inquire, look elsewhere. It's inquire. Alright, I'll go ask the students about Michio. I'm back, ma'am. So what did you learn? The school kids sure love a good rumor. I was practically drowning in stories about Mr. Janushi and Mishio, most of which seemed dubious at best. 
Not surprising. Most of what I heard was hardly worth a second thought. But there was one story that caught my attention. Oh? Some believe that Michio is the one who killed Mr. Janucci. Really? The story's got two pieces of evidence to back it up. One of them was news to me. Apparently, he's been mumbling that Michio was going to kill him for some days now. A fellow teacher overheard his mumbling and told the students. And then it spread like wildfire, I suppose. Rumors that juicy don't say a secret for long. As for the other piece of evidence, a pigtailed girl in her school uniform was seen around school late last night. Oh, really now? It's a fucking ghost! Go on. Although numerous people claim to have seen the girl, not one of them saw her face. Some are proposing it was Michio brought back to life, or that it was her vengeful spirit. But it's not like Michio's the only high school girl to wear pigtails. This rumor might have been made up just to fan the flames. Hmm. But if it were true, I'd want to get a hold of her in order to hear her side of the kidnapping. If she's alive, that'd be ideal. There's still one more thing I should mention. I discovered when Michio lived, a student had a list of student addresses on hand. That's an amazing find. I believe all the students actually have a copy of said list. It truly really worries me how easy it was to obtain what should be confidential information. Imagine what would happen if that information got into the wrong hands. Well, so far it hasn't, no. Sure. Let's hope it stays that way. In the meantime, it is now possible for us to visit Michio Shiraishi's house. Okay. I can imagine the students are uneasy after learning of the murder. It may do them well to stay home for some time, if not for fear of their safety. The police are probably too wrapped up in solving the case to be concerned about the students' mental health. I can see that. It's important that society provides a safe environment for the benefit of our youth. Some school policies could use some rewriting, especially those handling the student's personal information. That's right. I don't want a student being kidnapped on their way back home ever again. I expect criminals to grow more cunning as time passes. There may be times where the authorities can't keep up. That's where outlaws such as myself come in. And what's this about? Uh, actually, just forget I said anything. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so someone who is, quote-unquote, you know, a detective that can occasionally work outside the bounds of the law. Michio's home. I expect your family might be able to tell us more, but it's a hard topic to bring up so soon after her suicide. However, it's normal for a high school girl to keep things hidden from her parents, especially if it involves criminal activity. Okay, I can go there. Um, let's check the other locations first. Need to reach your park. We're here. This is Mito Reach your park. Ayami Tono lives around here. She wasn't in her apartment when I dropped by this morning. I wonder if it's worth checking again. Is there somebody over there? This place is connected with the story of the Taiko of Suguru. Not only that, Katsushika Haukusai's home was also in this area. That might be why Ayame chose to live here. Hmm. Midorisha Park, a small park bordering South Warigasui Street, sporting a mixture of cherry and evergreen trees. Although unremarkable in most respects, its small playground always attracts a number of children come evening. While no trace remains in the modern day, it stands on what was once the site of the Suguru Estate. The legendary artist Kats Katsushika Hokusai is also believed to have been born in the vicinity. I see no burps. It seems picking up Ayame's trail is out of the question for now. Why do we even come here? It's always heartwarming to see children playing in the park. Oh shit, I said I, I said that! Whatever, R Richter seems to like kids, perhaps because they're on the same wavelength. <laughs> I heard that! We won't get much done standing around here. Why don't I go and check out Ayame's apartment? You don't mean to speak with her, do you? No, I'd prefer to get an idea of what she's been up to. I'd like to see whether she's been home or not. Just potentially get a trace on her movements. Then be my guest. Okay, shouldn't be long. You're gonna go in there and fucking kick that shit open. Bitch, where are you at? 
Whoa! <laughs> it's Rick the Kai in the house. Bah! I'm back, ma'am. Did you really have to kick the door down? Oh, you know, I just, like I said, I'm a bit of a vigilante. Uh. So nothing? I'm afraid so. She still hasn't returned. However. However? I noticed a few people who seem to be related to the police force keeping watch in the area. I don't know if they got eyes on her apartment, but they do appear to be watching the building it's in. Interesting. You've got a sharp eye to have noticed them despite them being so covert. What can I say? It's part of the job. Wouldn't happen to actually have been Tets Tetsuo, would it? And, uh, an Aereo? However, it meant I had to refrain from knocking on her door or looking through her windows. I wasn't able to check her electric meter or mailbox either, unfortunately. You were planning to go that far? <laughs> uh... We won't make much progress to get around here. Okay. Nothing, nothing to do here. To, uh, South Warwick, Warwick, Warwick Street. At least we don't have to worry about dying during the day. At least, not likely. The Haku Soap's headquarters are on the other side of the South Warugasui Street. They were closed when I visited this morning, but it appears things are up and running now. Burp? Any burps? Where are you at, burp? To think a small soap-making company could grow so much in such a short time. They have factories and warehouses throughout the area now. You can see why director and now chairwoman Natsui Yamamoi is called the Queen. Yaku Soaps. A chemical producer that ranks 4th largest in the domestic detergent market, and 7th largest in the cosmetics market. From its humble beginnings as a small soap factory established after the war in 1946, founder Natsue Yamamori utilized her feminine perspective and a well-timed economic boom to boldly lead the company into new markets. Even as the company grew crowded with the industrialization of Sumida City, the company continued to expand, digging its roots deep into the area. In particular, it established itself as a household name by focusing its branding toward the rapidly expanding convenience store market. Its flagship products now include cosmetics, detergent soap, shampoo, and more. The company's name, Hihaku, can also refer to Kasuri, a type of pa patterned fabric. Oh, hey, there she is. Uh, Nasue Yamamori. Nasue is the former president of Hihaku Soaps, a large chemicals company. Though she retired from her position two years ago, she still wields great influence over the company from her position of chairwoman. Recently, there have been rumors about her possessing strange and powerful magical abilities, earning her the nickname the Witch of Hihaku. Prior to the war, Nasue enjoyed working her dream job at a textile factory. She was forced to face the bitter reality of the world, however, when the factory was destroyed by a fire during the war, and she was ordered to rework the fabric she had, been, she had painstakingly crafted into something more suitable for blue-collar work. Witnessing the rise of popularity of Western-style clothing in the post-war period, Natsue left the textile industry. However, a nod to her past can be seen in her company's name, with Hihaku being another name for Kasuri, a type of fabric featuring patterns and images woven with dyed fibers. Having long been dissatisfied with the soap supplied at the textile factory, Natsue saw a business opportunity and set up her own small soap factory. Taking inspiration from imported soap brands, she developed new products which quickly gained a good reputation. Ever the shrewd businesswoman, Nasue ran an aggressive promotional campaign on TV featuring a popular Japanese singer, rapidly turning Hihaku Soaps into a household name. Damn, girl. You mentioned that Tsukumi works as her secretary. That's correct. Do you think it's possible he's acting on her orders? That's exactly my thinking. A curse bear with both money and power could certainly look at resurrection as their next prize. Negotiating with a person of that stature may prove difficult. Hmm. Business is up and running. I can see people inside the reception area. Back in the Edo period, the canal known as South Warigasui ran through this area, but it's been turned into a major road. It's a bit away from Kinshicho Station or Ryugoku Station, though it's still considered a nice area. The story of the ever-burning lantern in the foot-washing mansion both took place around here. One of the bodies discovered this morning was found by this road as well. This is quite a lively area, huh? I suppose you could call it somewhat of a city center. South Warigasui. Warigasui, uh, literally partitioning ditch, refers to a waterway dug down the middle of a road as to divide it. 
At dawn of the Edo, at the dawn of the Edo period, the Hanja district was a little more than a collection of suburban rice farms. As the area became more developed, the South Warugasui was excavated in order to drain rainwater into the Yoko Jiken River to the east. Though it served the people long and faithfully, it was converted into the underground culvert at the beginning of the Showa era. In the present, no trace of it remains on the surface, but the street that bears its name. Isn't it amazing? Like, at this point now, I've reached the point where I'm so invested in the story, I don't mind reading all this stuff that is actually based on what is likely real locations, right? Where at the start, I was kind of like, eh, I'm just going to skip through this. It's just like, they don't talk about the geography story or whatever. But I was just like, yo, fucker, give me some more shit to read. <laughs> yo, tell me about that fucking street sign over there. That shit looks so dope. What brand of shoes is fucking Richter wearing? Where can I get a hat like that? How is the hat made? Tell me! I must know! He tells me he barely slept last night, and yet he seems to be brimming with energy. Was I too that resilient at his age? Perhaps it's what sets apart a detective from the rest. First, I need to confirm whether Takumi is, in the, is the man I ran into last night. Then I'll be able to determine if he's a curse bearer. It'll be better if I go inside the headquarters alone. So Shogo thought that he likely wasn't a curse bearer, right? Because he was asking for his curse stone. We don't really... Well, actually, do we? We don't actually have a clarification. I don't believe. No, we don't. You should walk around. Visit a cafe for some tea, perhaps. I'm going to go in. I may be a while, so feel free... free so feel... And <laughs> hey, this is actually a typo here. I will say, I mean, to be fair, there really haven't been too many typos in this game, I've noticed. I think this is maybe like the second one I've come across, but it says, so feel to find, instead of so feel free to find. I'm going to go in, it may be a while, so feel free to find somewhere to kill time. Okay, good luck in there. Sorry to keep you waiting. How did it go? I'll fast forward to the conclusion. I met with Takumi. There's no doubt. He's the same man I saw last night. But it doesn't seem like he's a curse bearer. Hmm. But that doesn't mean he has no connection to the recent curses. He knew about the seven mysteries. He even guessed we have a curse stone of our own. Oh. Excuse me. I tried to approach Takumi about a fallen item after I ran into him last night. However, you said your name was Richter, correct? I have a favor I'd like to ask of you. I'm hoping you would hand over the curse stone in your possession. Curse stone? What are you on about? There's no need to play dumb with me. In fact, there's no time for it. I had all the same reason you did to think you were a curse bearer last night. And your arrival here only confirms it. You are a curse bearer, no. Interesting. See, just like just like Shogo, he was able to piece this together so quickly. You're right. We lack time. I'll confess, I am a curse bearer. I possess the curse stone of the haunting clappers. I'm glad to hear the truth. Finally, this conversation is worthwhile. It is a dangerous item you hold. Give it to me. My company will take the responsibility to dispose of it. I didn't know the soap business specialized in scrubbing curses clean. It is the prerogative of Miss Yamamori. Is that so? Assuming you've obtained the curse, you understand the power it involves, no. Miss Yamamori possesses supernatural powers akin to those of a god. She also has a deep love for this land, having transformed it from the pile of dirt it once was the home of our headquarters. Interesting. So the funny thing is, right, now that we know a bit more about who he's working for, right, what he said to Shogo the first time they met is actually not wrong, right? It wasn't technically a lie. Uh, he, he said, I work for a witch with supernatural powers. It seems like he actually, that actually might end up being true after all. He just, he was leaving out who that specifically was and that it was part of the soap company that Shogo was also a part of. Interesting. She cannot stomach the fact that it's now the sight of these curses run rampant. So, you're telling me the Queen of Hihaku is a real-life witch? She wouldn't appreciate being called that, mind you. There's a sorcerer by the name of Suigwin Gomiodo, who's gallantly working behind the scenes, exercising spirits and the like. Or wait, no, he said a sorcerer, technically. I work for a powerful sorcerer. 
Segan Gamyodo? Go on. That being so, there have already been instances of the dead coming back to life. Do you understand the urgency of this matter? These are curses we're speaking of, tools which are used by wicked beings to possess people. The rite of resurrection is nothing but a fabrication meant to seduce the curse bearers into unspeakable action. If you truly understand what I'm talking about, you must hand over that curse stone at once. Very interesting. With that said, just how many curse stones have you acquired so far? If what you tell me is true, surely the company would have launched a large-scale search by now. Uh, we have six. Six? Whoa! I could rest at ease then. Really now? Oh, hold on a second. Wait. We can check and see if that's some bullshit. Because I think that is some bullshit. Yeah, it's, it's complete bullshit. We already know Tesso has three of them, right? That would mean he literally had the six remaining ones, which... Uh, we know is not possible. So he's full of shit. And here I thought I was at risk of being cursed. It seems we are on the same page. If that is the case, you should hand over your curse stone immediately. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it's not actually in my possession at the moment. Considering its importance, I've been keeping it in hiding. Really now? Then I'll accompany you while you retrieve it. I'm sorry, but... I've got something important to attend to, but I promise I'll return with it later. Very well. Then you won't refuse to provide your address and telephone number, I presume. How prudent of you. I'll oblige. And that's how it went. Hmm. So, they aren't after the, the right after all? I wouldn't be so quick to trust him. Oh? I believe we're dealing with a master in deception. He may well have made up a story to convince us to part ways with our stone. I think he was lying about how have it, about having procured six curse stones as well. Like, really, six? That's excessive. Well, now I feel gullible. The company is plotting something. I wonder what they mean to do with the curse stones. I bet they don't have any at this point. He seemed rather desperate to get a hold of ours, despite us not having collected any soul dregs. Perhaps the people at Hihaku are the masterminds behind the curses being unleashed. Because the chairwoman's a witch. I wonder about that too. If she really were that powerful, would her secretary have divulged that information so casually? Yeah. Takumi was either making it up as he went or... Or? Or he's trying to spread a rumor. Yeah, that's true. It's like trying to sort of set up this, like, idea about her. For what purpose would he do that? Recently, people have been caught up about the occult more than ever before. If word spreads that Hiyako's chairwoman has godlike powers, she could very well benefit socially and politically from that mystique. Hmm. That's unsettling. Rick is fucking smart as fuck, dude. Jesus. He's on the ball. By the way, there's one more thing of interest I heard while in the company's reception lobby. What's that? People were discussing whether one of the bodies found this morning was that of, Hihaku, of a Hihaku employee. Really? Shogo. So long as the officials haven't revealed the identity, it all amounts to no more than speculation, though. Despite that, I have reason to believe Hihaku's soaps is deeply involved with the Seven Mysteries. At the very least, I can assure you I've gathered that much. The more we know, the better our negotiations will go. We should avoid Yaku for the time being. It'll be a pain if I have to deal with Takumi again. Okay, I think we uh, got everything. How interesting that the Queen of Ihaku, or the Witch, whatever she is, is trying to get her hands on the Rite of Resurrection. It's like some kind of dark fairy tale. Regardless of what it is or isn't true, we must stay one step ahead. Okay, I think with that, it's now time to head to, to Mishio's place. So Mishio's dad is supposedly kind of a piece of shit, right? How did it go? I went to visit Mishio Shiraishi's family home, however. 
No one seemed to be there. I got no answer at the door, and all the lights were out. It seems to have been empty for a while now. There was a stack of newspapers out front. Oh, did they move out or get out of town? Hmm. Any burps? Burp? I ain't seen no burp. I don't understand why no one's coming, come to this house even after Michio committed suicide. I wonder if this place is okay. It's a bit quieter over here. It is a residential area after all. All these rundown row houses really scream working class, don't they? Hmm. I've never liked these messy and cluttered back streets. They give me the jitters every time. It's reassuring to have someone as strong and tall as Richter accompanying me. He looks so unfazed. I suppose a detective is used to this kind of thing. Always investigating and chasing criminals. I wouldn't be cut out for it. Social connections run deep in working class areas like this. So I decided to talk to the locals. I met a few nice old ladies who were kind enough to give me the scoop. Turns out that Shara Ishii's reputation really went down the dumps this past year. Is that so? I'll give you the quick summary. They moved here about three years ago. Their previous residence was in a better part of town. Michio's father died in a car accident, leaving behind just the two of them. Oh wait, I'm thinking of the right person, aren't I? Oh, that's- no, 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 that's right. She- she- her father died and that affected her, yeah. Following her father's death three years ago, not- not what I was- yeah. I think it might have been her... I thought somebody else had, a, had an issue with their actual father. Aside from death, like they, like, harassed her or something. Or maybe I'm fucking making shit up. Michio's mom, Toshiko, now a single mother, relocated here. At first, they got along with their neighbors, many of which were in similar situations. Helping and being helped in churn. So far, so good. What happened? Well, as I said, the reputation began to go downhill about a year ago. A man recognized as Tok Toshiko's common-law husband had moved into the household. His name was apparently Kana Kishiro Iwai. Neighborhood gossip is something else. Somehow everyone knew his name. So, what of this Iwai character? Hawaii? That's some guy, isn't that the same name of the guy that uh, sold my guns in Persona 5? He was apparently a vulgar fellow with a criminal record. He was prone to violent outbursts. The neighbors often heard screams and shouting coming from the home. The neighbors took particular notice of Toshigo's screams pleading with him to not hit Michio. Oh, no, 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 no. I should read the rest of this shit here. I think I heard one of the students that, no, it was. It was one of the students. It's not actually in here. One of the students was talking about uh, Michio, and it was her like her stepfather, right? I believe that was potentially abusing her. And the common law husband. I guess that's what that means. Is that what a common law husband is? I'm actually not even sure. I'm gonna look that up because that's kind of a weird. I never heard it described it that way. Common law marriage is a legally recognized marriage between two people who have not purchased a, purchased a marriage license or had their marriage solemnized by a ceremony. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay, so yeah, it, it would essentially be her stepfather, right? Michio's stepfather. That's terrible. As if that wasn't unsettling enough, every night the neighbors also began to hear an eerie chanting. Through this, the Shiraishi standing in the neighborhood plummeted rapidly. Toshiko was often seen covered in bruises and wounds. She stopped responding to her neighbors. She would just turn the other way when greeted. They kept their storm shutters closed even during the day, and effectively shut themselves away from the entire community. That sounds horrible. Why didn't the police step in and do something? Unfortunately, under our current laws, the police aren't allowed to get involved with domestic disputes. That's awful. And then Mishia reportedly killed herself. Things only got worse with Hawaii, and Toshika was admitted to the hospital for physical and mental abuse. Ever since, Hawaii hasn't returned to the home. Many locals expressed sympathy for Michio's circumstances, but just as many were fed up with the Shiraishis entirely and seemed relieved that things finally quieted down again, it seems that they were still considered outsiders even after three years of living here. I don't understand it. Why would Toshiko have gotten involved with such a brutish good-for-nothing in the first place? I've heard many stories where one's partner's personality does a complete churn after entering a relationship. 
After her first husband's death, Toshiko's financial situation had also taken a turn for the worse. She was determined to send her daughter to a good high school. It's possible she fell victim to sweet promises. Well, life can be tough, I suppose. You don't seem moved by the story, ma'am. That's fine. People have all kinds of stories. Hanjo Ace Detective. I got an achievement. What'd I do? Oh, collect all information on persons of interest. Oh, really? I did it? This is literally every person in the game now? Well, that's interesting. Okay, cool. Looks like we got everybody now. Uh, ugh. <laughs> well, look at this guy. This guy looks like a Yakuza. Uh, Kanakishiro Awai, the common law husband of Mishio Shiraishi's mother, Toshiko Shiraishi. Kankichiro started coming and going from the Shiraishi household a little over a year ago. Seems he has served some time in prison, but some details are unknown. Um, just him? What about like the mom or anything? Guess not. Hmm? Oh. So you came here too. What? I don't see anybody. What is it? Oh, hey. Ah. Could you repeat what you know one more time for me, Richter? Ah. -ha. We meet again. Uh, we'll probably then we see this from their perspective, right? But before that, let's go see what the hell's going on with Yako. Bring your friend back from the dead means she'll have to pay the price. Yako makes it home safely, but still isn't sure how to proceed with her curse. She worries about Mio as the night passes. Yay, Mio lived. Good, good. My little chunky friend lives to see another day. Oh, good morning, Yako. Huh? Yako? Rise and shine! Uh huh? Huh? You're up! Huh? It's morning. Um, I... Are you okay? Can you remember your name? Uh, Tom. Yako Sakazaki, Mishio Shiraishi, Mio Suruzu. The Spectre of the Spirit Board. Yes, I am the Spectre of the Spirit Board. No, no, don't fall back asleep. You must still be dreaming. Wake up. Yes, I'm Yako Sakazaki. Good. Oh, Mio. Thanks for last night. Was everything okay? Yep, still alive. Didn't die a horrible, painful death. I get my arms and leg cut off. I couldn't dispel the curse echo or learn the identity of who used it. But I managed to at least get away. But in that situation, it's the best you can hope for. I'm sorry I got you involved with something so dangerous. I meant to look for you as soon as the sun rose, but I was just so sleepy. I can't even remember when I fell asleep. It's okay. It's only natural to be exhausted after what you went through. Besides, I also feel bad that you've been wrapped up in all this. It's supposed to be my job to prevent that from happening. Oh yeah, you said something about that last night. Just, who are you exactly, Mio? Oh, well, um... The truth is, I've been training things having to do with the supernatural. Huh? You mean you can learn that kind of stuff like you would with the flower arranging? So, okay, before we continue here... So, seemingly, Yako has killed somebody, but she seems like she's unaware of it, maybe? It's like she was, like, unconscious? Did she get controlled by somebody else to do it? I don't, or do, like, I don't know. It, it seems kind of weird that she's like, well, like she had to like snap out of something. We've had, we've had moments of this happening throughout the story, right? Where characters are like, like they lose consciousness and then they're like, whoa, they're like, like they come back to reality. Like, is that tied to that in some way? Is someone like controlling her, maybe with their own curse stone to, to do stuff, something for her or to go do these things? Is it me? <laughs> I mean, it can't be me. I can't. I didn't have control over her during that time. I don't know. It's, hmm. Intriguing. I mean, you could learn that kind of stuff like you would with flower arranging. I had quite the eventful childhood. Huh. It sounds like it must have been, mm. been tough. Yes, it would take a long time to explain, so let's leave it at that for now. As fate would have it, I've ended up as the apprentice, or maybe more like assistant, to a notable paranormal expert. The sorcerer person? Schools have always had more paranormal disturbances because young people tend to be more susceptible to these things. 
I'm sent to schools that may experience something paranormal and put a stop to it before it happens. Wow, that's amazing. So it's like a part-time job you do while also being a student. Well, I do help maintain public order, but it's all part of my training, so I don't get any money. Oh, you've got a rough then. But still, that's really amazing. You were so cool when you faced off against the evil spirit. I never know if I should be happy when you compliment me like that. <laughs> but anyways, that's why it's up to me to resolve any paranormal issues in the school. And why I'm going to look into the cause of all this. But for now, let's head to school. Yeah. Oh, do you have your curse stone? Now that it's daytime and its power is diminished, I should be able to, be able to hold on to it. Want to give it a try? Right. I do have it, but... Yako? Is it really so wrong? Trying to bring Mishio back, I mean? I... Can't approve of it. The right may seem like a dream come true, but if it involves taking the lives of other people, then... Yeah, true. I want to make sure this whole ritual ends without anyone getting hurt. Bit late for that, unfortunately. That's what I believe, and what I'll put before anything else. I'm sorry, but is it okay if I hold on to it? Yako, I promise I won't use the curse, no matter what. But maybe there's some other way. I just have to feel this feeling that I shouldn't give up on the possibility just yet. That said, I'll help you, even if it's to stop the curses. For the Mishio that still exists within me, I'll settle things so that we can move forward. He was like, give me that fucking stuff! <laughs> Bulls on a gun. Give it to me, bitch! Okay, but if you ever feel in danger, you can give me the curse stone at any point. Right. Thank you, Mio. Okay, then. Let's go. My old pal, Mio. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Candy shop, uh, shop Sanoa. An old-fashioned candy shop located on a street corner in Hanjo. It's been in Yako Sakazaki's family for three generations. On the weekends, you can spy Yako watching over the store, cooking manjayaki, and playing traditional tops and card games with the local children. Though traditional candy shops are known for selling cheap treats for kids, it is not uncommon to see those largely privately owned businesses become becoming something more like general stores, selling food, drinks, utensils, and other daily necessities. Many families operate candy stores on the dirt ground floor of their home, known as the Doma, with a space in the back where customers can eat manjayaki, as well as arcade games and capsule toy machines in the front. Such facilities make them attractive places for children to gather and play. However, the harsh reality is that the traditional candy shops, which thrived during the period of high economic growth when many confectionery manufacturers enter the market, are experiencing a steady decline due to the rise of convenience stores and changes in children's interests and tastes. Doop, 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 doop. Do they even realize their teacher's fucking dead? I think I'll be interesting here, right? Because that's... Seemingly, Janushi was killed by Yako, or Yako's curse, so... Huh? I thought it unusually noisy. There's a big group of people and police in front of the school. Did something happen? If the police are here, then something must have. I'll go. Thanks. Thing is, once they hear how he died or what happened to him, this sh that should be indicative that she did it, right? That's that's at least what Mia would think. This isn't good. Huh? What happened? Um, don't panic, okay? The first teacher who came to work this morning found something. Okay. Mr. Janucci was found dead in the middle of the school grounds. Wh what? Damn it! It wasn't me! Did I do it? They're closing the school for today. But that's not all. I didn't know this either since I didn't watch the morning news, but rumors are spreading that a number of bodies were found nearby. What? Th there's no way. Why? C could it be? Because of the curse? We don't know enough to say. From what I heard, Mr. Junichi's body was in the middle of the grounds. But his body was covered in bruises, like he'd fallen from somewhere high. Weird. Taking into account his unusual, unnatural death and the timing, it's very likely it's something to do with the curse. So you're saying someone used their curse on him last night? Seems like it, doesn't it? But that's so scary. Yeesh. So their curse really, curses really do kill people. And someone used it. Shh. Keep your voice down, okay? I mean, they know though, right? That's how hers functions. What would happen if another curse bearer heard you? Eep. Sorry. 
fucking yeah, most real. Uh, his DC spot was discovered on the school grounds at dawn. I think I've already read everything else. I wish we had a little more information. I think I've locked up the front gate. Maybe we could sneak in through the back entrance. Hmm? That person over there. Isn't that Hitomi Okuda? You're right. That's unusual. Oh, but she was at the school last night, too. She must know something about Mr. Janucci. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, Mia, wait for me. Huh. So you tell me the two of you were the ones at school last night. No sense hiding it then. Plus, I owe you one, Mia. I'll tell you everything I know. Thank you. She owes you? Oh, um, yeah. Right after I transferred here, there was a bit of trouble. She gave me one of those, uh, what was it? Oh, uh, exorcisms. Huh. So that's what it was. <laughs> exorcisms? What? Janushi's death. Did you hear about Mr. Janushi? Heard about it. I've known about it since last night. I saw that asshole bite it on the school grounds myself. What? You saw it happen? Tell us about it. What happened exactly? Don't really know myself. It was pitch black. But I can tell you. It was almost dawn. Probably around three. He started freaking out all of a sudden. Ran out to the ground like someone was chasing him. And screamed. Ah! Somebody help me! Forgive me, Mishia! Or something like that while he was running around like a crazy old doodly boodly. Michio? He mentioned Michio? Was there anyone else on the, out on the grounds? It was too dark to see from where I was. For just a second, I think I saw a girl in a school uniform with a hair in braids. Oh? I didn't go out to make sure, so it could have been nothing for all I know. Then I heard him begging for his life like, I was wrong and I'll do anything. Then all of a sudden, his arms and legs snapped, even though he was just standing there. Blech. His arms and legs broke without anything being done to him? He fell over and quit moving, so I thought I'd better get out of here. Then he croaked. That's all I saw. I see. But from what you told us, it sounds almost, almost sounds like Michio's ghost chased down Mr. Junichi and killed him. Hmm. Like, I'm not, like, right? Like, I'm, hold on. Look at the curse here. Kills by fatal fall any one who hears his music and for 30 seconds without seeing the curse bearer. I mean, that's even what uh, Tetsuo determined was that he was killed by the fool's procession, the, the owner of the fool's procession. So what the fuck? What's going on with this whole thing with Mishio then? Hell, if I know anything about that, I'm just telling you what I heard him say. Did you tell that story to the police? Nope, and I ain't gonna. Can't count on them for shit. Not like they believe such an insane story anyway. Right. But there must be at least one person in the police worth trusting, right? Yeah, I guess. There was this one cop who always got on my case about stuff. Yeah, the the guy that died. But he died just the other day. Oh, he did? I'm sorry to hear that. Everyone who gets involved with me is a dead. Maybe I really am cursed. Piss me off. You've got it all wrong. The spirit that possessed you wasn't the, that kind of spirit. Huh? It wasn't? Yeah, it was just an unfortunate coincidence. It's the spirit that possessed her? Huh. Though I'm sure that was hard enough for you. That's all I know about that asshole's death. Hey, Mio. I've been thinking about something. Hmm? The way she described it reminded me of something. The way Mr. Junichi died. This is a lot like how Michio died. Yeah. Of course, I didn't see it for myself, but... The state of Michio's body was in. It was like she had fallen through from high up. Could they have been killed by the same curse? I don't think so. The curse of the Seven Mysteries hadn't manifested when she died. If we can trust what the spirit board said, the Michio died in an accident. Oh, right. It's all I know about that asshole's death, damn it! It was exorcism, yeah, what is this shit? They told me you were, were you possessed by some kind of evil spirit? I don't understand it all too well myself. 
but I can say for sure is, thanks to Mio, the weird symptoms that were happening to me all went away. Yep, some people are born with a natural sensitivity to the paranormal. They tend to end up isolated as they struggle to relate to the people around them. They also tend to draw spirits to them naturally. This can cause strange symptoms they don't understand like headaches, muscle stiffness, and hallucinations, and ev even memory problems. I'm sure it must have been very hard. So that's how it works, huh? Do people also have their personality taken over when possessed, too? Hmm, it is very- it is possible with spirits who have a very close relationship to their target, like siblings, or a parent and child. But you almost never hear about people being taken over completely. Hmm. It's when the two parties aren't in sync that those negative effects can start to appear. Oh. So the seances or whatever you see on TV are all bogus? Not quite. There are mediums and diviners who can align their minds with the spirits they call. Though there are people on TV who are just putting on a performance. Huh. There are people who in life had extremely powerful spirit sense or a deep connection with the person. But even they shouldn't be able to completely take over the person they possess. And even if they could, it'd only be enough to pressure them to choose certain behaviors that wouldn't be unusual for them to do on their own to begin with. Hmm. But if that's the case, wouldn't you not know if you were choosing that behavior of your own, will or not? Hence why there are a lot of cases where people don't even realize they're possessed. Though the spirit may influence the behavior and memories of the host. Huh. The deeper their connection in life, the easier it is for that to occur. Really now? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What if... What if Michio possessed Yako and had her go and kill... Mr. Janushi last night. Mm. And that's why she was all kind of out of whack, right? Uh, that morning. Because she has a, she obviously had a strong connection, right? Mm-hmm. That might be. The question, of course, then leads to, well, then how did she die? How did Michio die initially, right? I see. Getting possessed by a spirit is pretty complicated, huh? It must have been tough for you being possessed for so long, Hitomi. Huh. Whatever might have happened to me doesn't make any difference. Me being able to see spirits and stuff has nothing to do with how things ended up like this. Yeah, it's not like being able to see them is your fault either. The same goes for me. Maybe it's just something we have to live with. I think you have a knack for, for yourself, Yako. I bet you can see them too with a little training. Uh, I think I may pass. <laughs> mm. So that's why you do the job you do, huh, Mio? I thought she was a weirdo when she showed up all of a sudden saying she was going to exercise me. If you hadn't said anything, I probably would have knocked your lights out. <laughs> you try to perform an exorcism on her without telling her anything? <laughs> uh, you see, in my exper experience, most people don't understand no matter how much I explain. They only accept my explanation after they see the results. Ha! <laughs> huh, I guess that makes sense. That's funny. The classroom last night. But tell me, last night before you witnessed Mr. Juno, she collapsed. Can I ask what he and you were doing in the classroom? You gonna tell the cops? Oh, right, with everything that happened with Mr. Janucci. I suspect you if you were told you we saw you with him last uh, that night. Anytime something happens with someone like me, all those shitty adults start jumping at conclusions. I understand. I won't tell them. You wouldn't have been able to kill him anyway. If you say so, then I'll mind telling you about it. So last night, that piece of shit in called me over, acting like he was gonna attack me or something. What? How terrible. Whatever, I'm glad he's dead. He had it coming. Calling people worthless and a cancer on society when he doesn't know shit about them. That asshole was the one always acting like scum, if you ask me. Is that so? Could you tell us more detail of why he called you out in the middle of the night? Hmm. It is hard to explain. Wait, stop. Hmm. Uh, oh. Janushi's misdeeds. What do you mean by Mr. Janushi's acting like scum? Was he doing something bad? You know Michio Shiraishi, right? The girl who killed herself? Huh? Michio? I don't know everything, but that creep of a teacher has some dirt on her. And she was using it to blackmail her. Call her up after school and make her do whatever you wanted. Ah. Uh, okay. Funny. So I, I actually... 
that was an option I, I could have picked with uh, Harue. The option to uh, to say that he was blackmailing her. What? What? What do you mean when you say whatever he wanted? I leave it to your imagination. Nothing a couple of model students like you would ever get involved in. No way. That's how. What do you mean by dirt? I don't know anything about this. How could I have not have known about this? Yako, I know how you feel, but try to calm down. You got guts acting like you were a friend. Janucci really did a number on both Michio and his body and soul. Ugh. She probably felt she couldn't tell anyone, like she had to suffer alone. No, how terrible. Hey, tell me, how do you know about this? I just happened to walk in on it. I know the spots around school people go to when they want to stay out of sight. He ran off in a panic when I yelled at him, asking what he was doing. Walked in on it? Ugh. I could just leave it alone. Looked like she was about to cry, so I stuck around for a bit. She told me everything that happened in whispers. She probably figured I wasn't the type to spread that stuff around. But she never asked for my help. She told me that she was fine and to keep it a secret. Michio, why? She probably thought she just had to grit her teeth till it was through. She was naive. I try to tell her if you give guys like that an inch, they'll take a mile. She kept saying about how it was her punishment. She was soft. No. Ugh. Of course, Janucci didn't change. Kept on doing what he was doing. I don't understand either of them. But that's as much as I was involved. And then she killed herself. Nothing I can do about it now. They tell me, if you knew about it, then why didn't you... You trying to say it's my fault? She told me not to say anything. She told me she was fine. So what the hell more responsibility do I have other than what I already did? Yako, there's no point blaming you, Tommy. Michelle, why? Yeah, the dirt. Did you hear what this dirt was? Nope, never heard what it was. But from the sound of it, he'd been black man her since about a year ago. For that long? The dick probably caught her doing something she shouldn't have been. She looked well behaved, but there's more to a person than meets the eye, you know. There must be some reason. Don't know, got nothing to do with me. Damn. This is the class from last night. So last night, how did it start? Ah, oh, right. Remember that nosy cop I mentioned who was always on my case? He died at the former Yasta Gardens a couple of days ago. Yoshimi was his name. He was part of the juvenile division. He didn't look like a cop at all. Real rough guy. But good, good at looking out for folks. So he was the only one I could talk to. Huh. So there was someone like that with the police. Too bad he ended up dying. Oh, another thing. One time he suddenly introduced his fiance to me. It was hilarious seeing a big guy like that act like a shy little kid all of a sudden. She told me she was like me when she was my age, and she was on my side. It must have been terrible loss for her, too. Yeah, I do feel a little bad for her when I think about how, how sad she must be. And I... I saw him at the gardens of the night he died. So we brought this up before, right? That he had a fiancé? But we kept it on the mum... Like, the mum... Mum's the word on who that is, right? But the thing is, I already have now all the people of interest here. Actually, wait. Wait, do I... Hold on. Do we already have them in here? Do we have, have that? Is it that one lady with like the earrings? Yeah, this chick? Oh, yeah, it is. It, it was him. It was her. Okay. That's right. I, I was thinking before, I was like, oh, I wouldn't be surprised if it ended up being somebody we knew. And it's like, it wasn't. And I saw him at the gardens that night he died. Oh, no. Whenever I get worked up over something, Yoshimi always took, took me straight to the park. Then he'd listen to whatever it was I was pissed off about. That day, call me over there like usual. Ah, okay. But something seemed off about him. Like he was worried about something. Worried about something? Yeah. He asked me for a favor, too. That was pretty unusual. A favor? What kind of favor? He had me a weird talisman. And asked me to hold on to it for him. Oh. A talisman? Yeah, just a normal good luck charm. I figured if that's it, then sure, I'll take it. 
Have it with me now. But that wasn't all. Then he told me that he wanted me to look for a talisman Michio Shere Ishii had that looked like this one. What? Huh? Michio? What's she have to do with this? She may have been beaten up and talked with her. While they were together, he noticed that he had like a special talisman or something. Or that she had a special talisman. But apparently Michio always avoided the subject. A talisman that Michio had. He knew that I knew her, so that's why he asked me, he said. Could there have been something that Michio couldn't even tell the police about? I know things at home were a little complicated. From what I heard, Michio was keeping her mouth shut about what Janushi was doing to her. Hard to talk with the cops when someone's got dirt on you. And I didn't squeal on anything about Michio either. Michio, what is it that had such a strong grip on you? So basically, Yoshimi didn't just have his eye on Michio, but a talisman too. But after she died, he didn't know where it ended up. So since I knew her from school, he wanted me to look into it for him. Is there something special about the two talismans? Wonder why I gave it to you. Hell if I know! When I looked inside, it was just weird, kind of grimy scrap of wood. So you've seen inside it. But from the way he was acting, it seemed important to him somehow. But to be honest, what he was asking is such a pain in the ass. I figured he had to be serious about it. Oh, and since he died right after that? Yeah, he even said to me. If anything happens to me, take those two talismans. Give them to a guy named Nagio Nagagoshi at the police department. Nagagoshi. Knowing what I know now, he probably felt that something was going to happen to him. Which was Nagagoshi? Is that someone we've met? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm? Nagagoshi? Hmm? Do you know him, Mio? No, I've just heard the name, I think. So there really is a Nagagoshi. That's a relief, at least. Anyway, it didn't feel right just ignoring a dead guy's last request. You tell me? Yeah. The talisman. Would you mind if I had a look at it? Sorry, but I don't trust you all that much yet. It's important to me. Oh, okay. Aw. Hmm. So, last night you were looking for the talisman Michio had. Yeah. And I figured that piece of garbage teacher would know the, mo the most about Michio. I asked him yesterday afternoon if he knew anything about her talisman. He gave me some cryptic response like, I can't talk about it now. Come to the school tonight. He even gave me the code to the lock on the back entrance. He seemed pretty willing to give it out, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's used it for secret meetings before. Yuck. I can only imagine. I climbed over the front gate to get in. So yeah, we met up in the classroom in the middle of the night, but nothing he said made me sense. Like, that I was really Michio and stuff like that. He went on and on about how it was my fault and that if only I hadn't been around or something. He grabbed hold of me, breathing heavily. Eep! Were you okay? Yeah, that's right when you two showed up. I was able to get away while Janucci was freaking out. Oh my gosh, good thing you got away. So it's really all thanks to you two that I got away. But I didn't get any info about the talisman, so the whole thing was sort of a bust. Afterward, I was wondering what you two were, do were up to, so I hid nearby. And I saw you and the and old man uh, Shamia talking, and Mio showed up. Oh, you did? That's also why I saw Janucci come back outside and bite it. I see. So you were only here to look for Michio's talisman. I was dumb to fall for that creep to Nietzsche's trap so easy. Could have gone a lot worse, but I looked out. Well, you described to sound like Mr. Michio had killed Mr. Janucci. She did have a reason to hate him, after all. No way. I mean, like, that really was a ghost? Like, for real? Those who die bearing strong resentment or regret can occasionally become spirits, either bound to a place or roaming freely. However, it'd usually be impossible for them to kill the living. Most don't have that kind of power, but it's possible they could possess someone close to them to act on those lingering regrets. Huh. Wonder if that's what happened. Alright, and supposing what the spirit boy said is true, Michio's death was... an accident. 
And she must have had some regrets. She really hadn't given up on living, that is. I don't think she was the kind of girl who would just give up no matter what the situation. I don't really know, but she didn't seem like she had something tormented her so much that she'd kill herself. Hmm. That's all I know, Happy. I still gotta look for the talisman. Sure. Thank you, Atomi. Oh, if you two find out anything about Michio's talisman, we'll be sure to let you know. Thanks. Oh, can we get your contact info? Where can we f normally find you? Right. I'm not home most of the time. Usually I'm at a friend's place. Here's a phone number. Thanks. We'll call if we her if we need to talk with you. And, um, what is it? You're easier to talk to than I imagined. I was kind of scared at first, but not anymore. Just shut up! You were the one who avoided me! Anyway, catch you later. You don't die out there, okay? Thanks. We'll be careful. Hmm, okay. Got a, quite a bit of info from that. Alright then. You've got a lot of new information. That's why this fucking set me up! So it's like Mr. Genucci was killed by a curse, just as we thought. Which means there was a curse bear at the school. Multiple, in fact. Multiple? You think so? Yes. The curse echo we experienced in the school and the one that killed Mr. Genucci seemed to be different. The people in the school at the time, other than us, were... Mr. Genucci, Hitomi, and old man Ashimiya, who you ran into. I was thinking it would be among them, but... There was one more person... Hitomi saw a girl in a school uniform with braids. From what Hitomi was saying, it doesn't seem like she's one. Mr. Janushi is pretty suspicious, though. If he were a curse bearer, it would certainly explain why he was killed. Right. That's why I say there are multiple. Oh, right. The person who killed Mr. Janushi would have to be one, too. Which means it must be either the mysterious girl or old man Ashimi, huh? Yeah. We should certainly be careful of them. That said, the mysterious girl and the fact that Mr. Janucci thought it was Michio that was attacking them has me wondering. Of course, I doubt Michio herself was actually there, but... Oh, I just remembered. I also saw Mr. Araishi outside the main gate last night. You did? It's likely he's involved with the curses given that he's one, the one doing research on the Rite of Resurrection. So we'll have to be careful of old man Ashimiya and Mr. Araishi. Oh, good. At least they're aware of that now. I want to believe that not all curse bears will be hostile, but... As for what to do now, I'd like to find out who was responsible for the Feast of Shadows that set this off, and how they did it. I don't think we'll be able to end this without stopping it at its source. Huh. That makes sense. In which case, next we should do... What exactly? We'll need to talk with Mr. R. Ash Ishii. He'll definitely know something. He should be safer during the day, so I think we should try to look for him. Got it. I'll help in any way I can. The school's closed. I wonder where he could be. Let's try heading someplace someone may know where he is. Hmm. Where to go then? Oh, holy shit. Many places. Well, all right, guys. I think from that, this is probably a good spot to end things here for now, but shit. The plot thickens, but yeah, I, th I think that Yaka was possessed by Michio. Uh, and then killed Mr. Janushi with their, with their curse stone. I think that's what's going on here. That would make sense. But then the, the question then leads to the, who actually killed Michio, potentially. I don't know, man. I don't know. But anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not already become a Pinky Penguin. I'll bore the SLP. Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And hopefully YouTube doesn't... Fuck me over this time. God damn it. Please, God, please, God, please. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, as always, till next time, stay classy.